What's up everybody, it's me, Greg Miller, and if you've been living under a rock, the PSP2 is real, except it's called the Next Generation Portable. Let's find out all about it. Uh, Scott Lowe, IG and Gear God, what the hell is this thing? Well, as you said it, it's Sony's Next Generation Portable in the PlayStation Portable line. Uh, it's got a 5-inch OLED touchscreen, uh, dual analogs finally, and a rear touchpad, as well as 3G networking, so you can pretty much game wherever you want. But it looks exactly like the old one. And it's also way bigger. Yeah, so yeah, the only b major difference in terms of like the aesthetic is that it's bigger. Mm. Yeah. Colin, what do you think of this? Uh, I'm pretty excited, first glance. Uh, a little reserved about uh, the pricing, the battery life, things of this nature. But uh, the thing that stuck out to me was uh, obviously the technology is great. And uh, of course, the software that's been promised for the, uh, the portable is going to be pretty cool, I think. Uh, we got Killzone and Resistance, uh, Wipeout, a lot of first party stuff, um, and a lot of third party promises. So we're going to see where that goes. Nice. Ty, what do you think of it? Um, I'm not jumping aboard the hype train just yet. Um, I have a lot of reservations about the price, mainly because of the technology behind it. You know, when you have a 3G antenna, you have Wi Fi, the touchscreen, the OLED display. You start kind of getting up into the $400 range, and so I'm a little skeptical they're going to be able to actually keep it down without losing money, which is probably what they're going to do no matter what. I like the games that I saw, but um, I still have to see, based on the price, if it's something for me. I would love it if you could actually you know, play a PlayStation 3 game and pour it over to the PSP2 and actually start going at it, but until I learn more about it, I'm not going to be buying it day one. But I can see a lot of Sony fanboys just jumping on board and buying it because it is very cool technology. Well, I mean, that's that's one of the biggest selling points for me. It's just that it's, it's just a tech powerhouse. It is yeah. easily the most powerful mobile device I've ever seen. It's got, like, more processing power than, you know, anything that's on the market right now, including, like, the most powerful smartphones and even tablets. So now, is this Sony pretty much saying, you know what, we're not going to try to chase this iPhone gang like we have with minis that aren't successful and overpriced. This is us going for hardcore gamers who want to play Uncharted on the Well, go. to some degree, I think they have a lot of bases covered, actually, with this, because they have, you know, the powerhouse, but they also have, you know, the 3G connectivity, which makes it kind of, like, you know, constantly available, as well as, like, this new platform called the PlayStation Suite, which allows them to, you know, bring PlayStation games to Android uh, devices like tablets and smartphones which can also then be played on the NGP, so it's like kind of like one big ecosystem. So it's, it's definitely a direct shot at, at Apple, but I mean, I don't know if they're really looking to overtake Apple per se. Is it possible, Colin? Could they overtake Apple with any of these things? No, absolutely not. But, uh, you know, Apple is... What about trophies? The power of trophies? Uh, the power of trophies <laughs> alone uh, can change the world, Greg. Yeah. But uh, I, I agree. I think uh, it seems like they've learned a lot of lessons from uh, the past. PSP was uh, a commercial success. It sold over 60 million units. Uh, that's really the best uh, non-Nintendo. Uh, handheld in the history of gaming. Uh, but the misconceptions with PSP were that they didn't have games, they covered that. Uh, and I think uh, the biggest game I think for the platform right now is probably going to be that Call of Duty game. We don't know anything about it, but that's really going to rope in a lot of uh, I think casual gamers and people that want to play over a 3G network. It sounds pretty riveting to be able to play a shooter with those twin sticks anywhere you want. That, that's obviously the best selling uh, franchise in, in gaming right now. So I think that's a big deal. And obviously all the first party stuff uh, is going to get the Sony fans in. But I also agree with Ty. If it's going to be $400, that might put it out of range for a lot of people. I think it's probably going to cost $400. but. Uh, I think 300 would probably be the, the sweet spot. Yeah, I almost see like it, it, it seems impossible for Sony to realistically go anywhere above like 350 at the max, but mm. the yeah. sweet spot is probably about 299. But you know, there's also the concern for like how much the data plan is going to cost because I mean, uh, assuming they allow you to download games or, or you know access like online servers that sort of thing through 3G, that's a lot of data coming through and people are going to have to pay for it. My thing is I'm just concerned about how big it is. Like I enjoyed the PSP Go being small, slide, put it in my pocket, and go. Whereas this guy's bigger than a PSP 3000, which I already thought was pushing the limits of my pants. But but, <laughs> but don't forget, you know, like we th we discussed with Scott today on on podcast Beyond is is uh you know. I think we're getting away from you know the, the minute electronics, the, the, the need for everything to be as small as possible with things like iPad and Galaxy. Um, I, I think people are more comfortable putting something in a satchel or in a backpack and not and necessarily bring it with them on the go, but it doesn't have to fit in their pocket. I think people are going to be okay with well, it. Well, I don't know if only further cements the fact that they aren't trying to compete with the iPhone because like that is the super mobile device. This is something you know hardcore gamers are going to want to take around, whereas you know this is what you take with you everywhere. All right, wrapping it up one thing that you think they can do to succeed in the future, Colin, go. Uh, I think if they can get the price, like Scott said, as low as possible, even if they're going to eat it, I think that's going to be the most important thing. Scotty. Games, as always. Mm -hmm. But, you know, obviously price is important, too. Ty. And I think it's hitting that sweet spot, both the games, the price. You know, they don't want to completely alienate the casual audience, and I think that's what they may have done, been guilty of in the past. So don't leave them out in the cold, you know, but it's, again, those games, Uncharted, awesome, Call of Duty, awesome. So get those games out there, but don't forget about the majority of the audience as well. Excellent. 
All right, so can Sony hit the sweet spot with this NGP? Keep watching IGN to find out.